Hi, welcome to Renee Marie's Stroke of Luck. I'm Renee Marie. I am so happy to have this platform. We are rocking and rolling with the stroke and aphasia world. We are making a difference, changing the face of strokes and aphasia around the world. This platform that Madhouse TV has really gifted us with, it really makes a difference in the world. Um, today I was driving in and... Uh, a really dear friend of mine, Karen Noe, who is the author of uh, Your Life After Their Death, um, said to uh, invited me on to her radio, t radio program to talk about my, um, the telethon we're having, which is 22 days away. Yay! Yeah. Woo! So um, we got to do that very softly. Anyway, okay. so, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's funny, but in life when you want to accomplish something, you just do it. And I was, I set it up where I was traveling in and I had her, her, her radio program on speakerphone and, um, and it finally came to the time where I had to call her. So I pulled over on the Cross Island, Long Island Expressway and that's where I made the call to her. So, <laughs> so anyway, so listen to Karen Noe's show. It is incredible. It's on www.wrc. R.com, and of course, you can find all the information about Karen Noe on the Angel Quest, Angel Quest show, or you can Google Karen Noe, and um, she does phenomenal. So, I really just want to take this opportunity to really thank you from the heart and soul, Karen, not only for your friendship and for being such a, a divine angel in my life, but um, for giving me the opportunity to. Um, to promote the show and talk about something that's very dear to my heart, which you know that I don't even have to tell you. So there we go. Yay! We're doing it very quietly. <laughs> anyway, so today is going to be a phenomenal show, as I we always have. We have grown into this, um, this platform. Um, but before I begin and we talk about who's on the show and the wonderful show we're going to be having, let me introduce my, my co-host, uh, Bobby Baby Walker. Woo! Yay! Yay! And then we have our special correspondent, uh, Judy Marlowe Rotway. I said Rotway. Rotway. Oh, Rotway. She's, and she yeah. said to me, don't, but I'm like, no, I'm going to get it right. <laughs> that doesn't matter. That's, 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 yay. that's a yay. Anyway, yay. And, and I got to tell you, you know, we, we couldn't do what we're doing without both really? of these individuals that are sitting here. Um, Bobby is really um, a confidant of mine that really keeps me level, very important, when I have something um, really... Keep you on track. Keep me on track. He kind of says, okay, Renee, come back. Come, come back. come back down. Come <laughs> back down. down. Come on. <laughs> and Judy makes me fly. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Judy, Judy's actually been doing, I can't tell you the phenomenal work Judy has been doing. I think, I think you must have sent out like 300... Really, it has to be 300 yes. <laughs> notices about the telethon. She has hit every single Long Island um, newspaper and really around the world, around yes. the country. Yes. So thank you so much, Judy. We're really, we're honored. Um, you know, can you believe it's 22 days away? Wow. Yeah. yeah I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. We we God, it, it really, it really... It's going to be a real blast. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be phenomenal. It, yeah, yeah. We have um, entertainers who we rolled out last time on our show. And if you would like to um, take a look at who we have on staff, you know, who we have, not staff, but who we have um, scheduled for that day, you can go to www.languageoflovetelethon.org. Once again, it's www languageoflovetelethon.org. You'll see the speakers we have. We'll see the stroke survivors we have. We have um, 23 entertainers, I believe, um, coming on board with us. Bobby, um, Tommy, and I are going to open up the show with, with the show, almost like the, the Grammys show, and right, the Oscars. Right. Come on. This is, <laughs> as in, this is as important and big in our world Absolutely. as it is for everyone else yes. so right. we're gonna right. we're gonna rock yeah. and roll the show so join us we're gonna have a great time we're gonna set the pace yes yeah. yes yes we're gonna light the fire we're gonna light the fire light it up. <laughs> <laughs> judy um did a wonderful thing and she worked with sharon bean 
the executive state director. The executive director of estate planning. Estate planning, who has been a, an angel to us here at the, the, the Stroke of Luck TV program. Um, she has really hooked us up big time with the American Stroke Association, and they just, they're rocking and rolling. I can't tell you how much I love the American Stroke Association. They really have supported us and really believe in our vision and where we're going. And, and we just want to make a difference. We just want to come together yeah. with everybody around yeah, the world. Yeah. So um, Judy spoke to Sharon, and we have our guest on the show today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about our guest on the show today? Our, our guest is Garrett Men Mendez and his mother, Eileen. And Garrett was 19 years old when he had a stroke, and he was playing hockey, ice hockey, and he went in to uh, make a goal, and unfortunately he hit his head on the ice, on, oh. the, on the wall. Wow. And right away he didn't know, I mean, they had someone check him out, but he seemed to be all right. Now his, now his um, we're going to talk about this when they come out, and of course, you know, but his, his dad was just telling me, and his mom was just telling me, who are divine angels as far as I'm concerned. And very um, well informed. Very well informed. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that, that, and we thank you for that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Woo! We, can, we can't clap loud. Woo! <laughs> That's going to be our ongoing funny thing. <laughs> um, but they, they were saying that when you, he has a stem, a brain stem cell stroke, a massive brain stem cell stroke. And what happens with that is that you are, oh, oh, you, you're, you're awake while it's happening. So it's, it's, it's pretty intense. And how, what I, what, what really touches my heart is I really look forward to hearing Garrett from Garrett about his Experience, inside, yeah. inside looking out. Because right. to me, nobody knows what it feels like to have a stroke. And each stroke is so unique and different and, you know, what you have to go through. And the fact that we were talking in, in the green room about that they, he is an athlete, like I was an athlete playing softball, I think it helped us save our lives. It really did gave you the strength. Right. Yeah, it gave you strength. It gave us strength. And, and perseverance. And perseverance. You know, and, and no, like we're, we're just focused to win and we had to win in our lives. So it, it really is very. And you're the type of people who <laughs> never, if anyone <laughs> says no, you just keep going yeah. and keep striving. No, right and through. And <laughs> like that. Too. Oh, I go around you. <laughs> like, Get out of the way. <laughs> I don't not even say that. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I take a step back. No. And then you, <laughs> you think about like, how yeah. you, you know what you can do, and, and sometimes you take direction when I tell you put on your boots and side step. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I do. Bobby tells me to side step the bull. the bull, the bull. So it's it's really good. Um, so you know we're gonna we're gonna talk to Garrett and his mom Eileen and his dad Garrett um, Senior. I don't know if it's Senior. Gary. Gary. Oh, Gary. 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 Yes. Is I in the is so. gonna in the green green room. And, um, and then we're going to, you know, we're going to, um, I'm going to be singing a really heartfelt song called The Language of, the language of Love, called uh, Through the Eyes of Love. And it really, when I, was, when I was thinking and looking through all my songs and, you know, finding a song that really meant something to me to sing and tie into this show, I, um, I really, that just hit me, Through the Eyes of Love, because... You know, it, it's, I wish that people would look at people through the eyes of love and really yeah. understand that you don't know what's going on in that person's life. And don't judge them and don't, con don't condemn them. And right. Don't, you know, like be compassionate. Wait to, wait to find out because, you know, things do pan out and you do find out what... If you give it a chance, you'll find yeah. out that the person is really a what nice person. What people are experiencing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that, that, that they're going through things too. You're going through things. They're going through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, life happens. Right? Life happens. Yeah. Life happens, and that's you know one of the things that is really important that we stay on track in our lives. So you know, for me to sing uh, through the eyes of love really means a lot, and it's a song that I actually was rehearsing it before that I haven't sung in years, but it's a song that 
I guess I was preparing back then. I sang it every week. I used to, I used to do bingo for my kids when they were in St. Anthony's school because I was a single mom, needed the money, so they, they helped me pay for school by helping do bingo. It was a huge operation. We had like 200 people come to bingo. It was huge. Wow. And I used to run the caf, caf, cafeteria also, which never happened before I ran it. Anyway, so, but I had this whole auditorium to me, myself, so I used it, so I, I, I rehearsed <laughs> my music. I'd go in at 4 o'clock, bingo didn't start till 7, I'd go in at 4 and sing, 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 and this is one of the songs I did. So it, it's, it's really moving and really touching to me to be able to, yeah. to sing, you know, through the eyes of love. How did it sound before? It Beautiful. Good. Yeah, it good. sound good? Absolutely. The wording is it, the, so... The words. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah, and, and, and I, in my world, and I know people think I'm off, the, off my rocker. <laughs> <laughs> and the people I'm talking oh. about is Bobby. <laughs> I think we're oh. supposed to be like you. <laughs> no, but, but in my world, I'm very, I'm very passionate uh, about having a relationship with God and really lucky to have found God in my life to be able to help me to achieve whatever I need to achieve. And, and actually in my book and everywhere else I always tell everybody is, I work for God. We all work for God, but I know I work for God. And I know that he gives me direction and where I should go and what I should do. And uh, sometimes, and it's always the hard road. And you're God's right. masterpiece. No, and, thank and, you. And I'll, I'll, I'll pay you after the show. <laughs> so anyway, so we're really excited. Do you have anything that you want to stick in before we begin the show? Um, no. No? You, you performed last night, right? Yeah, I, I performed last night at a place called San Martino's. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was with a gentleman called uh, Ray Burkhart. And everybody loved us. Love, Woo! but Why Ray, not? you're great. Ray, yes. Ray is, uh, has performed with the Coasters, the Drifters, um, a whole lot of groups, and he's very, very good. And I'm hoping to do a lot of work with him. Good, so, yeah. good, good, good. And 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 maybe we can uh, entice Renee to perform <laughs> with us. <laughs> right after the telethon, every every waking minute and even sleeping minutes. I'm really pulling the, together the telethon. You would have no idea how, how much work how much work it takes to make it look easy, mm -hmm. to make it run simple. I mean, it really takes a lot of dedication and work, and and yeah. you know you got to do it. You so cross all the T's and dot all the I's. And I've learned that through Bobby and a bunch of other wonderful confidants in my life that you have to say no to other people if you wanna you wanna be successful. So, and we are going to be successful. Yes, we so, are. With that, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back, and we'll be right back. We're going to do a live commercial. Hi, I'm Renee Marie. I'm the uh, president of Language of Love Incorporated Foundation. I'm really happy um, to tell you that we're going to be doing a Language of Love telethon on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please look for uh, the location on my, um, my website, ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And once again, it's ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And the show um, will be on, hosted on the Madhouse TV. It really is important for you to um, be aware of strokes and aphasia. Strokes is the third leading cause of death in, the, in America and the first leading cause of disability. And it really is something that plays no favoritism. And it also really comes when you're not expecting. Nobody expects to have a stroke and nobody expects to suffer from aphasia. And it really does play a huge, make a huge impact in your life and change your life in one split second. So we look forward to having everyone join us uh, once again on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And you can follow us on uh, ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. Once again, it's ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And we look forward to seeing you. God bless.
blow your mind right in front of your face! <laughs> Goodbye. Oh no! Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the bounce dryer bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer and I never have to remember. Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials! You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do! Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. Old Spice Body Spray can change a regular smelling man into a man who smells like power. Now, how is this? Ah! Wow, you know what? I actually do feel more power. Potato chips! <laughs> ba -ba 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 power! It's me! You told me to let people know. Hello! <laughs> Welcome back to Renee Marie Stroke of Luck. I'm Renee Marie, and I am, I can't tell you the, the, the passion I have for this show today and how, it, how really important I think that, that this story is to the whole world. Um, and I really hope, you know, that it gets translated around the world because we know that strokes have no... Boundaries. Boundaries and no, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, prejudice against uh, who, they who it affects. It could happen in a split second and your yeah. life Absolutely. is different. Yeah. So we're going to, we've had two wonderful individuals join us. Um, right to my right, which is my weak side, <laughs> is Garrett, the gentleman that we were talking about that had a stroke um, at the age of 19. So let's hear it for Gary. Hey. Woo! Welcome. You're welcome. And to his right um, is really his mom and probably his saving grace and rock that really got him through a lot of the, um, the trying times. Um, and, and most of you know, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you that I believe love is the answer for everything. Love conquers all, and when you have love and support around you, you can make it through anything, right? Very true, yes. Yes. It, helps. it does help. Yes. So let's hear it for Eileen before yeah. we begin our conversation. <laughs> Woo! So, Garrett, you know, we're going we're gonna to ask you to just tell us, like, in a few words exactly, not exactly, but you, what you remember about your stroke. I remember about my stroke was really, it was a bad dream. It was a bad memory. I really thought I was in this euphoric nightmare that I couldn't escape. And I thought that one day I'd just wake up and it'd be all a big joke. Wow. And it happened to me that it was a long road I've had to take the past nine years. And I'm still a work in progress. You're a great work in progress. You're a miracle. So, yeah, thank you. Woo! Thank you. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. So, Eileen, tell us a little bit more of the details of what happened with um, Garrett's stroke. Well, Renee Garrett was a freshman in college at Western New England in Springfield, Massachusetts. He was playing hockey on a junior hockey team up in Springfield. Weekend before Thanksgiving, he had a hockey game. His father and I went to watch him play. Really rough game. He was always that player that would do anything for the team. Opponent took a shot on net. He dove on the ice to block the puck. He slid headfirst into the side walls, the oh boards of the rink. I was sitting next to my husband, and I remember grabbing his arm and going, <gasps> because I really thought he had broken his neck or that he was dead. And oh a few God. seconds later, he started to move his feet. He got up. He skated off the ice. He was checked by the trainer, who found no sign of concussion, and he finished the game. 
Wow. A few days later, he came home for Thanksgiving, day after Thanksgiving. Oh, so he wasn't living home. No, he, he was, was at college. college. Yeah. Okay. He came home, and he had another game the day after Thanksgiving. He seemed wow. fine that he week. another game. Came home wow. that night. He said he had a headache and his legs were weak. Later that night, he started to vomit. <gasps> and he said the right side of his face was a little numb. Well, we thought flu. We thought that the numbness in his face is from the face cage that he wore on the hockey helmet. Maybe it pinched him or the vomiting. We never put together that hit from six days earlier with those symptoms. What we didn't know at the time is when he hit his head, he dissected the artery in the back of his neck, which oh bled for six days. And oh after six God. days, a clot formed that caused the brainstem stroke. He went to bed before the symptoms escalated. And when I went to check on him the next morning, I was shaking him. I was calling his name. I couldn't get him to respond. I couldn't get him to wake up. Oh, my God. We rushed. We called 911. We rushed him to the nearest hospital. Uh, for the first 36 hours, he was misdiagnosed by a neurologist who refused to believe that a 19-year-old had a stroke going so far as to telling us 19-year-olds don't have strokes. That, you know, I got to interrupt there because it, that is such a common that is, yes, and, and this is not, the, yes. the, and not only that, but the strokes, they're so miscon, miscon, mixed, diagnosed. Mark McEwen, mm. did you hear his story? Yes. You know, yes. I mean, he, he went on a, uh, you know, he was out doing his, uh, his, you know, weather somewhere, and he suffered a stroke, and he went to the hospital because he didn't feel what they said. That, I think they said it was um, a, a cold or a flu or something like mm -hmm. that. And they just sent him on his way. They didn't do the work. And, 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 you know, I don't, I don't mean to sound negative against the hospitals. I don't. This is not about the hospitals or the doctors. But there has to be something. And I, I know that they're doing their work now yes. to find out. But on the, other hand, on the other side, it takes us as responsible adults and individuals to learn the signs so Definitely. that we could, right. so that we could be our own, right. our own, like, um, Team. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. So I'm sorry. I didn't no. mean to. I just, it just, it just, I, it floors me yes. that someone didn't, you know, like, diagnose you. Yes. yes. But uh, did you tell him he had, a, he had, um, he yeah. had hit his head? Um, he, I believe that it was a few weeks before we were at, even at that point where he would understand anything. Um, he was locked in. He was on a respirator. He couldn't see, oh couldn't speak, God. couldn't swallow, was fully paralyzed. And for about the first two and a half weeks, we did not even know if he would survive. Um, wow. that, you know what? Could, Stop right there because wow. how does that feel? You're in such shock at that point that uh, my husband always put it in good terms. We started out living minute to minute. Then when we could go 10 minutes ahead and then we could look, a half a day into the future and then a day into the future you know it, it just it changes your perspective of how you view life what's important in life yes and and how you how you judge everything around you and what happens yeah. I mean the radiologist swore that it was a stroke and the but the neurologist wouldn't he met with my husband and I um, about 24 hours after Garrett was admitted and he sat down and actually two of our f good friends were with us and he said to us, I have a report from the radiologist that diagnosed stroke. He said, but I'm going to put that aside because 19-year-olds don't have strokes. Ugh. He said, I believe he has a severe form of encephalitis, which is what they were treating him for, and he will be sitting up and talking in a few days. That went from that to doing an MRA, which proved that it was right. a massive stroke, right. to him blurting this news out in the middle of the ICU lobby and not even responding because he, I think he was so angry at himself that he misdiagnosed him. And we were very fortunate that the hospital that he was in was excellent. They immediately brought in another doctor, and the care that he received from that point forward was phenomenal. Yeah, mm, yeah, great. yeah. And then you know they don't. It's not. That's what I said. Like it's not. It's not anything against the hospitals or anything, mm -hmm. you know. But but it's so sad. There's that yeah. that story Some really does. People always have that story. Ideas, yes, you know. You know about mm -hmm. things. And yeah, and you yeah. know, and doctors are people. Yeah. Yes. They're people who have so much going on, you know, and, and you know. This goes to they show that they also at that time were not aware of that you could have a stroke at the blink of an eye at any age. Any or age, even. any age, and that's, that's really what this TV, this program is about. Yes. The, you know, that's what, when we say we're changing the face of strokes and aphasia around the world, we're talking about 
that it happens to anybody at any age, and it's not, um, it doesn't choose. It just, it just affects Even you. an unborn baby. Yes, right. Yes. yes. Yeah. We actually, um, I interviewed a little girl who said her brother was born with a stroke. So it doesn't matter. No. And it really, it really does affect. So, Garrett, um, yes. how do you feel? Like, uh, what's, your, what's your biggest challenge? I know my biggest challenge, but mm -hmm. what's your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge initially was just walking. Uh, just physically getting back to life. Um, some of the hardest moments I've had is returning to school. I know it may sound silly, but just having to sit through class and just do all the work. And yeah, it's scary, but I got through it. I'm still in school. Are you in, 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 in college? Uh, yeah, so at Housatari College. Wow. In Ridgeworth. Wow. All right. Congratulations. Thank that you. is awesome. Thank you. What are you studying? Uh, right now, I'm thinking about going for my physical therapy assistant degree. Wow. You would very be good. very yeah. good at that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very good at you. He works in a physical therapy office now as a physical therapy aide wow. at Sacred right. Heart University in Fairfield. So it would be a continuation of what he's been doing. And who knows how to help people that are going through, you know, therapy than Garrett. Nobody would, would understand yeah. it better yeah. than Yeah, you. that's the main thing. I just really love first working with people. And I really know what it's like for a patient's point of view to have been through therapy, or know what it's like, to know what it feels like to wait for a therapist to mm -hmm. have to do all of these things and keep going, even though you may not see improvements right away. And you, by telling them I've been there too, you're giving them motivation yeah. to fight and get back yeah. to their health. Yeah. And when we were out in the uh, green room, uh, Garrett and I and Eileen and um, Judy and Bobby, we're talking about the fact that, you know, both Garrett and I are athletes. You know, I was a stro I was a softball player, an avid, crazy, crazy softball player. You have no idea how insane crazy I was. <laughs> and you, I got I got to have Pat Talaferro, my softball coach, and Barbara Stewart, and and my sister, and tell you, I was I was a little. I can imagine. I was <laughs> because you know, when you want to do something, yeah. you go. Somewhere. I mean, I would. I used to go. I used to go. Our game used to be at um, at six o'clock uh, or six o'clock, mm -hmm. and we used to have to be there an hour before mm -hmm. for uh, five. And I used to just be sitting on the bench at three thirty, saying, "Where is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Where is everybody? Like, like, are we? They should be here already." Like, you know, Pat used to pull up in this yellow van. I remember it's so big, and you know, it's like, and that's another thing. Like, we used to know, we used to be trained that we had to go get the equipment. We had to do so. The point that I'm, I, I wanted to bring to everybody's attention is Garrett and I were trained to know is not a vocabulary word and mm -hmm. trained to, to focus and to fight and, and to really achieve what our intention is, right? Especially yeah, the mentality I've been learning from ice hockey since I was three years old is you just close your mouth and you do it. Right. No questions. I can't no. imagine playing ice hockey because because <laughs> that's intense. I mean, uh, you got to yes. be in excellent condition. Yes, it takes time. Uh, it helps that I'm playing since such a young age, so I've conditioned my body over the years. Wow, wow. Well, with that, we're going to take a quick break. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm curious. Yes. Um, many stroke uh, victims have a problem uh, speech. Did did you have a problem with Oh, that? yes. Uh, I initially could not open my mouth whatsoever. Uh, I couldn't speak, couldn't say a word. The only person who could understand me was my mother, mm. but she could understand me when I was three years old. Yeah, right. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna hold that thought for one second because we have to take a quick commercial break, but we'll bring up the, okay. the, the um, speech, which is a passion of mine, and we'll bring up the reading when we come back. We'll be right back. Stretching under sedation or manipulation under anesthesia is a very gentle, very precise procedure to very slowly release any scar tissue that is formed as a result of a traumatic injury. Many people ask, how does this work? Will I get hurt? Will you stretch me too far? We only stretch the body part to its normal range of motion. 
After completing the post-MUA rehabilitation program, it's very common that our patients say to us, hey, I can play ball with my kid again. Hey, I can bowl again. Hey, I can enjoy hiking again. This is what makes it rewarding to us as practitioners. I think this is a good time to tell you. You're doing okay, Mom. I can call you Mom, right? I know we haven't known each other very long, but you seem like a real keeper. You're not perfect. There was that strained carrots incident, but you're trying. You pick up my bottle every time I toss it out of my stroller. That's high comedy to an eight-month-old. You hum the Barber of Seville when you wash my hair. So cool. And your rubdowns are out of this world. Anyway, I want you to know how much I appreciate you. You know, right? How much I love you? You're doing okay, Mom. Shattuck Gates is the number one fence provider on Long Island, with the most inventory in stock including vinyl, chain link, and Illumix offers a custom powder-coated system that prevents rust throughout the life of the fence. We carry fence tools to the trade. We even stock wood, rail, and glass hardware as well. Shannon Gates has our very own patented locking system. The next time you need fencing of any sort, both commercial and private, give Shannon Gates a call at 631-392-4330. You can also visit our website at shannonbeatsinc.com. Welcome back. Hi. Hello. Welcome back to Renee Marie Stroke of Luck. Wave, Garrett. You're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> See us? <laughs> so um, we've been having a wonderful, heartfelt conversation with uh, Garrett, um, who suffered a stroke at 19, and his mom... Um, Eileen, and, uh, and before the break, Bobby had asked um, Garrett his, uh, what was your question to, Gar uh, to Garrett? How was his speech? Was he, did he have a problem with his speech? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I couldn't speak whatsoever. I had to relearn to form every word you say in the English language. Wow. Well, I think are, you're doing uh, really yes. good. Yes. Awesome. That's why I asked, yes. because yes. You're, you're, you're so... Uh, Articulate, you Thank know. You. I mean, Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> there are times uh, I say, "What did you just say?" Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. but, but I've learned. <laughs> tell, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, Gary, because I still, I st people wouldn't imagine, but I really suffer from aphasia, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about aphasia, and 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 what I've been trained and learned to do is to stop, take a take a breath, mm -hmm. take a step back. And refocus mm -hmm. and yeah. think about put everything in place again. Is that true? Is that what you do? Oh yeah, definitely. It helps. Definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Now you were talking about he has a um, a retainer. A retainer. It's called a pallet lift retainer. Um, Garrett does not have a gag reflex, and um, it actually when he had the stroke, it devastated him physically. And one of the things it did is it took out the ability to control his his pallet, which wow. you use in speech. Constantly, his palate doesn't open and close to form sounds like P and B, and so the palate lift retainer um, covers the palate so that he can keep air in his mouth. It gives his voice a louder quality, and he's able to more accurately uh, pronunciate words. And it's made a huge difference. When he had the stroke, I will tell you, it was probably two years before he would speak to anyone but close friends and wow. family because his speech. He hated speech. It was, I think, if you ask him what was the most challenging thing, speech. it was his speech and being not able to communicate. And I'll never forget one of his speech therapists, his speech therapist, Chris, that we absolutely adore. When we were in the throes and he couldn't even open his mouth, he couldn't swallow, one of the things that Chris said to me is, I promise you that at some point he will be able to communicate his needs effectively so that everyone will understand him. And I, at that point, you're so in the throes that you never really understand. Yeah. But she knew. 
and she was so right. But it just took a long, I mean, long it's gotta time. Be, it's got to be, I mean, I have two girls, and everyone has children, you know, or, or, or relatives. Yeah. And when I grow up, yeah. I'm going to have a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, have, you have nieces and nephews, yes. you know, which are like your children. And I can't imagine. I mean, I, I just can't imagine. Maybe My either. nephew, Mikey, um, we almost lost him twice in his life. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was right by his side, and and really, it's it. I I can I can we can mm -hmm. I can feel for ha the the emotions that you must have been going through. But I can also see in you that you stayed strong because you knew you were gonna he was gonna be okay, and that you needed to. Am I correct? In yes, my, we yeah. I mean, we we you were and your husband, of course. We walked away from everything. Um, yeah. We did all that we had to do. To, we were self-employed real estate appraisers, walked away from our business, and spent the first three to four years after his stroke totally focused wow. on his recovery and rehabilitation. And we never wanted to look back and say, uh, if only we had tried this, if only we had done that. You know? And we know that we have collectively as a family, I have a 31-year-old daughter, Jen, and we all put our lives on hold because this was the most important thing that we had to do. Of course. And I know that he would not be where he is today yeah. if we all hadn't done that. And yeah. he has Absolutely. an amazing support Absolutely. group yeah. of friends from kindergarten, yeah. from high school. He went to a Catholic high school and played hockey there for four years. And his best friend, Jeff, from hockey was over last night. His other best friend from kindergarten up, up the road, Ross, was oh, yeah. over, you know, last Sunday. Wow. I mean, he has a tremendous yeah. support group, That's which, great. as you know, the support group of your family and friends. I, I had it as well. It's so had important. It as well. I, I was, I got to tell you, I was completely blessed to have uh, my sister, my father, um, Pat Talaferro, I mean, you know, Barbara Stewart. Um, you know, throughout my life, I've continued to have angels in my life. Dominic Cordalesa, who really helped me with the aphasia. Um, this was a gentleman that, you know, God brings people into your life mm -hmm. to help you. And uh, he, he was a gentleman that worked for Citicorp, um, you know, a, one of, a, a leader in Citicorp. So he knew how to gear people and listen to people. And, um, and he helped me. He saw something in me, and he helped me to defragment my brain. And he helped me to set principles like, okay, we'll come back to that. Think about it. And he walk out the room. He make me do the work to really find out what I needed to take that next step and, and to really defragment my brain. Because in all honesty, I would just, I would always be happy. You know, like, oh, we've got to do this. And oh, yeah, we're doing that. And the whole world was like, what? Like, what, what's wrong with her? You know, like, you know, and... and the work I wanted to do for, for stroke and aphasia, I needed to stay focused and I needed to be a little more um, aware and I needed to defragment my brain and he, he pinpointed it and he really, he's a, he's, a, he's a gift from God to me, you know. But I, you know, I had peop, other people in my life as I've been going along um, that really helped me and I call them angels in my life, you know. So, Garrett, I, I really want to, I really want, you to share with our audience, you know, because I always talk about uh, my book, how from the inside of an aphasic mind, what does it feel like when when you when we when we talk, approach somebody, and I know the first two years you wouldn't even talk to in front of you know anybody but your family, mm -hmm. but now you know say your mom's not around and and you you are dealt with somebody that is not looking at you or, or knows your story. And, and, and how do you feel when you talk to them? Well, I deal with that all the time where I work at Sacred Heart. I'm a physical therapist aide, as my mother mentioned before. Having to talk on the phone to strangers and people not knowing me. But what I found is people are not as cruel as I thought. They're very accepting to my situation. They don't judge before they meet. When wow. they get to know me, then they really like me a lot. And a great relationship can form between us. But, wow. um, That's yeah, so I can good. vouch for that. I like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We awesome. all do. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. But, you know, there are those times where you're walking in the mall and you walk past a group, and not so much now, but in those early days when he was a train wreck. 
and people would stare and people would look and his sister would get really annoyed <laughs> and there are times that you just want to go up to people yes, and say what's yeah. wrong with you you have yeah. no idea what this yeah. child has been, been through, through and what he has accomplished more right. than you will ever accomplish yeah. in your life yeah. you know that's that's <laughs> basically my mentality is i look people look at me and listen to me speak and yeah they may judge in their head but i bet you i can do more than half of what they can do uh, you know, I got to commend both of you, Absolutely. and really want to thank you for, you know, the the ongoing work that you've done. You know, people could curl up in a corner somewhere and 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 not do what you guys are doing. So thank you so much for your ongoing work and mm -hmm. the awareness. Um, we have a photo back there, Vicky, um, of uh, Garrett playing hockey. Can we show that one first? There we go. It's Garrett playing hockey. That's your old hockey days. Yes. That's, I believe that's one of the main keys why you're to where you are today. Yes, and, definitely. Um, actually, this is the, tell us a little bit about this. This is, was, um, we'll show the one with the helicopter, but this is the, the, the promo that you guys wanted to talk about for the... Um, for the American um, Heart and Stroke Walk. Yes, yes. Um, this is our 10th year. Um, we got involved with his rehabilitation hospital, Gaylord Hospital. It, not, it hadn't even been a year after his stroke, it, and uh, we've done it now. This is our 10th year. We do all that we can to raise stroke awareness. We speak on behalf of the American Heart and Stroke Association as often as we can. Yeah. Because I always know that if I had heard a story like ours at a couple of really critical points, I would have realized that it wasn't the flu. I would have done more and I might have been able to change not just his future but our entire family's future and it's very important to me as you said before stroke can happen at any time to anyone at any age yes. and to us it's very important to get that that message across and we have found that platform through the American Heart and Stroke yeah, Association. They're incredible. I yes. gotta give them kudos yes, because they, they are, are incredible, Absolutely. incredible and they're gonna join us on the telethon and they're actually, oh this is him playing golf <laughs> and can we show the one on the helicopter? Because I know we only have a few minutes left in this. Is there, oh, there's not one on the helicopter? Okay, that doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, I didn't have one either, so. Oh, <laughs> but tell us about the helicopter story really quick. Do you want to uh, tell go it? Go ahead. Okay, um, a few years back, um, Garrett was a stroke ambassador for a few years for the, for the Heart and Stroke Walk. And we would speak often at CEO breakfasts, which they, they typically do for a walk. And one of them was at Sikorsky um, in Stratford, Connecticut, which builds the Sikorsky helicopters, the Blackhawks. And at the breakfast, the president at that time, Jeff Pino, who was an amazing man, presented Garrett with a Sikorsky flight jacket that you only get <laughs> when you uh, cool. buy a helicopter. I think it had his name wow. embroidered. Wow. And oh, that's so Garrett nice. jokingly yeah. said to, to Mr. Pino, well, that's great, but how about a helicopter ride? <laughs> so um, Jeff actually made that come true. They give to their employees that do charitable donations. They give them the opportunity, I think, to have some time off or, or to have uh -huh. a helicopter ride. And two people in the corporation gave up their seats so that wow. Garrett and his dad... Where did you go? I wonder yeah. what would have uh, happened if you would have modified that and say, how about a helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where did they question. take you? They, um, they took us over the Hushantanic River. Wow. Um, and how far, do you know how far? I don't know. You were up about 20 we, minutes. Yeah, I was we, just we, glad we, when they landed. We were, we <laughs> Can't you imagine? I can't imagine. Uh, before we go, because I know we only have a few seconds left before we go to break, I really want you to take this opportunity to, to really make your mark and to really share with the world what it is that you both want to um, say to everyone. Our main message, really, just if I have heard my story somewhere, then hopefully it can impact someone else's life and help them with the better future that I have. Yes, and you are doing that, yes. and we thank yeah. you. And I have learned that it takes um, just keep working, just keep working and keep doing. What do you? What's your? Oh, well, a couple of things. First is that there are things in life that you can't change. And you can make a choice to, as you say, roll up in a ball and, and forget it, or you can choose to make the best out of life mm -hmm. for whatever your it new, hand, your new, what hands does Oprah you. Say your new, your new regular, your new normal. And, 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 and that's an normal. important thing because I say to a lot of people is that, you know, sometimes life can be different 
and 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 you know sometimes that's okay yes you know mm -hmm. different is okay mm -hmm. and there is nothing in life that you cannot get through if, yep. you, if you really because in time everything passes yep yep and you gotta love yes, yeah. love, yes. love is the answer yes. everybody thinks I'm crazy but I know. <laughs> I know I know is there anything love else? And support no. no just thank you for inviting us yes, thank oh, you you're welcome. And, so and you're gonna we're, we're, the next the next segment what we're gonna do is I begin singing um, and then um, Bobby and I are doing money money which I thought was a great song because the telephone's <laughs> 22 days away <laughs> And please join us on the stage. Okay. Is that okay? As long as we don't have to sing with uh, No, no, no. Just, you just got just to gotta feel yeah, it. just move it. Okay. Okay? okay. You got to Maybe move it, move it. Okay. Oh, got we're it. Gonna take, move we're going to take it. a minute. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. My name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain, we treat carpal tunnel, we treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls, we treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries, we have state-of-the-art equipment, we've been here for over we do 15 years. a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 
or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Could switching to GEICO really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Do dogs chase cats? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Could switch. Let our creativity work for you. We design business cards, brochures, annual reports, newsletters and magazines, menus and programs, flyers and mailers, signs and posters and more. We also do voiceovers. First impressions matter. Make yours count with an expressive voice artist. Distinctive, warm, soothing, natural delivery that can add believability and appeal to any audio project. Contact us to discuss how we can make your project a success. Sierra Graphics. That's info at sierragraphics.com.
with this show. Come on up. We're going to roll out. How many second minutes we have? Two minutes? Three minutes? We just really quickly want to thank Garrett. Thank you so much, Garrett. We're blessed. We're honestly blessed to have met. Thank you so much, Eileen. It is a blessing. Where's Judy? Oh, <laughs> and Judy. And we really just, yo quiero decir en español muy rápido que tenemos que invitar todo el mundo a mar marzo 29 uh, mayo uh, uh, marzo 29 vamos a tener un uh, un telethon un telethon para uh, uh, enseñarle a la gente que nosotros estamos sabemos uh, queremos decir esto enseñar a todo lo, lo sí, the signs the strokes the stroke the stroke yo no sé si pueden decirlo en español pero queremos decir que que podemos um, queremos que tú invitar a tú para marzo 29 para tener un buen tiempo con nosotros cantando sí okay let's rock and roll we just want to do a, a spanish blow uh -oh. let's go you know the song come on just feel the beat, let's go. Come on, 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 come Let's go, Bob. Kisses. 